On June 10, 1940 the Kingdom of Italy declared war on the French Republic and Great Britain, thus launching itself, totally unprepared, in a conflict that would bring it to its knees. The first taste of this wretched adventure came just 24 hours after the declaration of war. On the night of 11 to 12 June, the British troops present at the Egyptian border, with a bold coup, attacked the Italian garrisons on the border, capturing about 80 men and sowing panic in the Italian lines. In those hours Forte Capuzzo fell while Forte Maddalena tried to resist the enemy assault. The rapid feat was masterfully performed by the 11th Hussars, an extremely mobile unit of the 7th Armored Division. The British armored cars crushed the fences placed at the border and gave rise to the long campaign of Africa, which will last for about three years, among many failures and ugly figures on the Italian side. In the following days, the British armored cars found a thorn in the side for the Italian units, unable to effectively oppose them. This problem is quite peculiar, the British vehicles were certainly not the latest technology. The latter used mainly two models in those days, the Morris CS9-LAC and the Rolls-Royce 1924 MKI. While the first was a fairly recent model, although it is still a civil chassis adapted as armored cars, the second was a modernization of a model dating from the Great War. The armament was almost identical for both models, being equipped with a boys' anti-tank rifle, a Bren machine gun and turret and a smoke launcher. Although it is a rather modest armament, the speed of these means amply compensated for this deficiency making them very effective in the Cyrenaica desert. What did the Italians put in place to effectively oppose these means? Italy entered the war without an armored car in service. This fact is highlighted by Mario Rowata and taken up again by Lucio Siva and Andrea Carami. Remember that at the beginning of the war the Italian army did not even have an armored car, and had in service in terms of tanks only Type L3 and that M11. There was a program for the development and production of an armored car, as recalled by the deputy chief of staff, the existing program of armored vehicles was as follows. Construction of armored vehicles, on wheels, with double guide, protected by rifle fire, armed for the most part with 8-gauge machine guns, and in small part with 20-gauge machine gun. Given the lack of an armored car similar to the furniture of the 11 Hussars, what could the Italians use then? The British vehicles after all were quite vulnerable, a barrage of Fiat Ravelli Mod .1935 machine gun at 300 meters could easily penetrate the armor of armored cars, but the problem arose in countering them. Indicatively, the first that identifies and shoots the opponent, in a comparison between armored or armored vehicles, is almost always victorious. The Italian vehicles used at that time, we talk about the famous L3, had less mobility than the British counterpart, and above all they offered a very reduced visibility to the two crew members, making them blind in front of the enemy. L3 therefore could not effectively play its exploratory role nor could it effectively counter any enemy attacks. So there was a need for an armored car capable of filling this disastrous lack in our arsenals. In fact, Taking up Rawada's speech and expanding it, we can see that there was already an armored car in the studio by the Fiat and Saldo partnership. The vehicle was developed both to meet the demands of the army and those of the P.A.I., Polizia Africa Italiana. Originally, the vehicle, developed in the period 1938 to 1939, was subsequently accepted for mass production on March 18, 1940, and ordered in 176 units, of which 54 for Yugoslavia. After the war, the order of the army increased to about 239 units, thus doubling the initial demand, considering also the fact that the means destined abroad will be redirected to the Royal Army. The initial vehicle, called AB-40, entered service in the spring of 1941, already showing its limits. This vehicle was equipped with good mobility thanks to the discrete 80-horsepower engine, the four large-wheel drive and all four steering and double controls. As for the armament, even before the delivery to the departments was decided to change it because it was considered inadequate. As we shall see, this problem will arise again later, not only for the Italian designers, but also for all the armies involved in the conflict. The turret of the vehicle initially housed two Breda Mod. 38 8mm machine guns in binary composition. It was decided to replace them with at least one 20mm piece. Originally only a small part of the ordered lot had to mount the new armament but later it was decided to mount it on almost all vehicles already produced and on those in production. Since the 20mm Breda gun could not fit in the narrow turret of the vehicle, it was decided to mount it on a new turret, 
strongly inspired by that of the L6. After all, the timing for the design of a new turret was pretty tight and previous knowledge was used to quickly reach the goal. To support this statement Siva and Karami bring an interesting excerpt of a letter from E.N.G. Rossini addressed to General Rafael Cadorna, the latter in fact complained about the lack of armor. Please keep in mind, dear General, that the original specification of the SM for the AB-41 included the only armament with two machine guns from eight. Only from the beginning of the war was decided in a hurry and fury the installation of the 20 gun that being larger and cumbersome required a compromise solution. As we see the need for adequate armament to the circumstances of the North African theater led the Italians to put on the field an armored equipped with a superior armament to the British. The German tanks also entered the Libyan desert, also armed with a 20mm machine gun. The British, being thus in an inferior position, decided to replace on the field their pieces boys or their base of 15mm machine guns with 20 or 47mm pieces captured to the army of Graziani waiting for the arrival of the new armored vehicles equipped with 40mm pieces. As the conflict continued, the demand for a 47mm armored gun became increasingly urgent, also considering the fact that the 20mm gun proved increasingly less effective against the new British vehicles. From the returnees of experience, it was noticed that the double controls, the wheels of support and the machine gun in hunting, useful in an urban use, were almost useless in the difficult soiled North African. And Saldo then began the development of a new model characterized by more rational lines and the removal of those superfluous organs that we mentioned before. The front armor is now made up of a single inclined wall that allowed a greater ability to deflect the opponent's blows, a greater space for the crew without burdening the overall weight of the vehicle. Presented in May 1942, the first prototype left the factory on November 7 of that year, ready to reach the center for studies and experiences of motorization, a center that never reached. The AB-42 was still equipped with a 20mm Breda machine gun, placed in a new turret, lower and wider than the previous one. So the problem of armament remained. Always Siva and Karami report the words that ENG Rossini del Insaldo addressed General Cadorna about, my technician Sig Biji has told me that you think it appropriate to arm a portion of armored cars with a 47 gun. Evidently this corresponds to an unavoidable and current necessity given the recent painful experience. For your opportunity one inform you that on behalf of the Inspectorate Motorized Troops and Battleships, we are already studying the armament of the AB-42 with the 47-40th gun. For AB-41 the issue is more difficult. As can be seen from the excerpt of text just read, there was already in the study the adoption of the piece in the new models, while it was probably unlikely the adoption of this piece in the existing AB-41. The first experiments, made almost simultaneously with the development of the AB-42, led to the creation of a very unique medium. Under the supervision of the inspectorate, motorized and armored troops, and Saldo developed a new model, without a turret, equipped with a 4732 piece with a barbette, installed on a candlestick carriage in a large open-air combat compartment. The vehicle was based on the 42 chassis, not to be confused with the AB-42. The vehicle was not equipped like the latter with double controls, auxiliary tanks and machine gun in hunting but maintained the general lines of the AB-41 and its motorization. The steering wheels were reduced only to the front torque compared to the four steering wheels of the aforementioned model. The side panels were redesigned to accommodate the new combat compartment. The crew consisted of three tankers, pilot, servant and commander. The latter two took their seats inside the fighting room and handled the main armament. No machine guns were planned for close defense of the vehicle. The ammunition was very large, in fact the vehicle could accommodate 100 grenades, placed behind and inside the vehicle. The vehicle was presented in December 1942 and completed in early 1943 but was shelved. Probably as Pinato suggests the reason why it was not accepted was probably because of its strong profile, being equipped with an excessively large silhouette. I add that the solution of mounting the piece in an open combat compartment put in serious danger the members of the crew, vulnerable to the firing of the enemy rifle, artillery fire and fire of enemy aircraft. The experience gained in the development of the vehicle made engineer Rossini understand the need to adopt the piece in turret. Therefore the turret of the AB-42 was properly modified by equipping it, as mentioned in the previous section, with a 4740th gun. The same will be mounted on a 42 chassis 
creating the AB43. The vehicle will be presented and then ordered in two versions, the first is the one we briefly talked about, the second kept intact the turret of the AB42, then returning to the old 20mm machine gun. At the end of July 1943, of the 300 vehicles ordered, not one was delivered to the wards.